<clears throat> Whoa. Good morning, everyone. Wow, Andrew up and out after his workout. Samir, of course, I see you hitting it on LinkedIn early. We'll see how long that lasts. It's easy to tell now when you're working on it, brother. It's good. Very good. Vaughn, good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's make sure that uh, we get the training Friday on transitioning. Uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Email me, david at dmeltzer.com or join my text community, everyone. 949-298-2905. It's the early edition. Early morning here before I go for a run. Uh, we're looking good. Everyone, let's get some questions going. Here we go. Should your mentors all be somewhat aligned with each other? Not at all. Uh, your mentors should sit in a situation that you want to be in. They can be completely different, completely separate and not aligned. In fact, they can not like each other. <laughs> anyway, let's pin up there. Uh, Andrew, there's no Team David Meltzer today, so uh, I don't know where they are. But let's go live here. Friend Jonathan Newsbaum, and he has an incredible company. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome for the early edition of live here at 5 30 a.m. in California. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Have you had a great day? Yes, I have so far. And uh, Jonathan, we're welcoming you. And whoop, we're gonna get them connected. All right. Get in a good position. Welcome, everybody. Let's get some more questions going, Andrew. Samir, here we go. Uh, maturity is the ability to reject good alternatives in order to pursue even better ones. Ray Dalio, can you explain? <clears throat> yeah, what Ray means is that uh, it's not rejection for me. It's transitioning or moving towards, right? So I'm happy where I'm at. I'm angling towards what I think I want, but I have faith that I'm going to end up somewhere better. So therefore, I'm able to not take on good alternatives as I angle, but take even better ones on, that I have faith that there's something better, that is not what surrounds me, um, but uh, what surrounds it. So uh, let's see here. Jonathan's back. We'll let him in. Uh, oh, Team David Meltzer woke up. That's good. We'll pin that down there. Hey, hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Very good. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, you know, I was so intrigued by what you guys do in 03 by just basically converting water into sanitizer. And especially now, no better time than ever. So I thought, oh, perfect. Maybe you could explain uh, what you guys do. Sure. So, I mean, one of the great things about about the, the O3 bottle is that it does exactly like what you said, is it converts tap water into sanitizer. And all of us over the last number of months have had such a struggle in, number one, not even going to the stores, right? But even finding it, whether you order it on whatever ordering service you're doing and not getting it and not having it available when people are saying, okay, soap and water. But I think that the big thing is, additionally, we've had so many more poisonings. I mean, I have a four-year-old son. And if you're spraying Clorox on the counter or in your bathroom or whatever, and he goes in there and puts his hands on it or you have a pet and they go in, they could be poisoned. And poisonings are up dramatically. So the great thing about this is it's non-toxic. I mean, I could spray it in my mouth and it wouldn't do anything. Uh, <clears throat> it's a sanit it, it sanitizes any non-porous surface like your bathrooms, your kitchens, but also you can clean your toothbrush, your hairbrush. And one of the amazing things that we have now too is we have a, a COVID claim. You know, most products uh, out there are not able to actually test COVID-19 but we have had in, uh, in our labs a 99% kill rate on the human coronavirus surrogate, which is what most companies are using to test, uh, you know, COVID, which is a very similar uh, strain of COVID as COVID-19. So now you can use tap water essentially with our product and kill, you know, all sorts of bacteria, salmonella, E. coli, 
And additionally, uh, you know, a lot of people are getting groceries from the store and they're cleaning their fruit and their vegetables and spraying groceries. And this sanitizes fruits and vegetables and chicken uh, cutting surfaces. It's uh, the FDA acknowledges ozone as uh, a product that's safe to clean your food and vegetables. And I think that the other thing that people, you know, uh, are really not understanding about what ozone is. And ozone has been in all of our lives for years and years and years and years. You know, in our country, we don't necessarily tell people what it is, but, you know, it's in water supplies in, in major uh, cities and in the U.S. It's used commercially in hospitals and hotels and all sorts of, you know, even supermarkets. It's in pools. I had ozone blood therapy yesterday. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the way that nature actually cleans itself. So after it rains, it's the smell after it rains is ozone or when a wave crashes and it's really the act of electricity splitting the O2 molecule to O1 and reattaching as O3 and it becomes this natural cleaner. And how long does the bottle actually last if you're filling with tap water? Is it just for one fill or can you refill it? Oh, no, no. So you can, you can, this product will last you most likely three to five years. So, you know, it's a one-time purchase that, you know, really eliminates 95% of the chemicals in your home. And yeah, it's not a, a cheap product, but anything good is not cheap. Yeah, you, know, no. you, you can go get something, you know, we, we, my, my main company, we manufacture for Home Depot and for Lowe's. And if I made a lousy product, somebody's going to be returning that to the store in a few months. And, you know, sometimes, you know, product actually costs a little bit of money. But the great thing is over time, this product saves you money. Because if you're buying cleaners on an average of 20 or $30 a month, and this product's lasting you three years, it's paying for itself within, you know, a number of months. So I think it's a real, it's great, especially, you know, with all the talk of sustainability and green products. I mean, you know, it's a very big thing for me is the environment. Um, and I don't want to be seeing laundry bottles, which you see all the time in plastic bottles. I live on the, on the ocean. I go downstairs and you see bottles, you know, washing up on the shore. And it's, it's not the type of planet that I want to have, you know, for my son. And I think that products like this are extremely important in getting us to a more sustainable society. And this type of product is not reactionary to the pandemic. This product was developed and distributed before the pandemic. And now, obviously, its applicability and attention and awareness has grown exponentially. Um, for original use of the product, was it just as a green product to replace all the other cleaners? Is that what the original intent? Yeah, we, we, had, actually started, we had actually started developing a laundry product uh, a number of years ago, um, which is essentially the same thing. It's using ozone. It eliminates laundry detergent. So now I don't have laundry detergent. Again, last three to five years. Great. Where, you know, you have these shirts and then, you know, clothes you're putting on your body. And I heard you were going out for a run. I'm going to work out as well. And if you sweat and if you're using laundry detergent, it's getting consumed by your body, by your skin. So the great thing about that is you know, you, you use laundry and it's, and there's no chemicals. So we started developing that came across uh, another company called Inozo, who was in the commercial space for many, many years. And they were selling a much larger, more expensive bottle on the marketplace. And we started working with them to develop the consumer bottle, which is what this is a more affordable version. And, you know, a little bit scaled down because it's not used for commercial aspects. So yeah, no, we, we uh, started working on this over a year ago. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for everybody, the pandemic happened. And, you know, the timing was great for a product like this. But, yeah, no, we were just developing it as a sustainable product, as a new way to clean your home and really try to educate people and say, yeah, this isn't, as, I, as I've heard on social media, this isn't snake oil. This isn't like, you know, how do I know it's working well? Ozone is a, is a very widely known product and, and used in so many different ways. Uh, just we don't know about it in our country. And mostly everybody has used ozone without knowing it.
Right. And, you know, it's interesting. Uh, last question. You know, I talk about building a brand, building a frequency, owning your customer and building a community. There's also one thing I don't touch on a lot that you've done. You know, obviously your other business is in the furniture space and you've been working. It's owning the distribution. And, you know, you can parallel the distribution that you gained in relationships that you gained through that distribution into the O3 as well. And it leverages and accelerates, you know, a successful product you can push through uh, multiple SKUs. And we don't talk about that a lot, but it's equally as important not only to own the customer and, you know, by having credibility, emotional attachment and delivering what you promise, but even more importantly is owning that distribution and doing with the credibility what you say because if you destroy those relationships, it wouldn't matter how great of a new generation or a new product that you have, uh, you'd be cut off immediately. How important was that in your decision to take on a different type of business within the context of the distribution that you had? Well, I can tell you, for me personally, it, it's huge because, you know, I, I started my main company, Green Touch, in 2014. I leveraged every dollar that I had. I was sitting in a hotel in China with $200 in my pocket. I had to call MasterCard to get an extension so I could pay my hotel bill. Um, and now I have a, a company, you know, thankfully, you know, we're doing over $100 million and have 70 employees and, and have a really great business. So you're right in, in that it is a risk when you come out with anything new to jeopardize those relationships that we have with a company like Lowe's where this product will be, I think it should be live today on Lowe's.com. Um, yeah, it's a big risk. And, and certainly if you don't have the confidence in the product, you don't want to risk your distribution because you know something that doesn't work if you give a company like Lowe's or a company like Home Depot or whomever you're doing business with something that's a dud, it could jeopardize it if it, if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. The great thing about it is it, it does do what it's supposed to do. I mean, there are, we've used it. We've done all sorts of things, like even like deodorizing and, you know, friend's dog that smells and their wife's getting all sorts of, you know, product to keep it, you know, not smelling. And this thing works. I mean, you're, you're going out to run your hat will probably get like a salt, you know, kind of that little white spray. Well, you could take the bottle and spray it, leave it yep, <laughs> and leave it and leave it in your sink. And then in a few hours, it won't smell and the stain will be gone. I mean, just simple use cases like that really convince you when you can actually see it. And then you're actually using it on a daily basis. And you're like, man, this thing is an amazing product. But for sure, you know, it is a calculated risk. But I didn't really consider it a risk once we really got into the technology and really saw what the product could do. I would imagine the gyms and the fitness centers uh, all, you know, should have this because, you know, one of the biggest challenges is the huge fitness space that we uh, have, you know, completely cut off with the big gyms, the franchise gyms, uh, you know, having one of these O3s can save uh, their membership, you know, being able to simply spray down equipment. Uh, and that's true about kids sports. You know, one of the things is you're looking at pads and, and other things and helmets, uh, there's always a challenge on how do you wash those. And O3 is a perfect solution for that as well. Um, beyond Lowe's.com, where can people find uh, the product? Um, it's on uh, our website, O3waterworks.com. Um, I think in, an, in a number of weeks, it should be at Menards as well. Um, so, you, you know, besides our website, I mean, I can also give, uh, your followers a, uh, a discount code. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, oh boy, I already forgot what it is. <laughs> um, I'm going to use it. I'm, I'm, when I get back from my run, I'm going online and buying it. <laughs> I, I already forgot what it is. Hold on. All right. Well, I can, post, I can post it. it later too. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do if, that. That just shows you yeah. how much he believes in his product. So that's awesome. Uh, we'll see who else is there. Any last pieces of advice for people, you know, since you've been studying this space as far as staying safe, sanitizing, anything that you want to share with us before you go? No, I mean, I, I, again, I think that, you know, there are a lot of products on the market that say they do similar things. They're not the same. Uh, you know, you see them all over the place. They're adding formula. They're adding tablets. 
Um, you see all different. It's not the same as ozone. Those are disinfectants. Those are chemicals. Um, this is not. And, and like I said, the great thing about this, and you brought up gyms, which, which I'm not necessarily going to at the moment, but uh, the great thing is this doesn't leave residue. So you can spray this down somewhere and be like, oh, I forgot, I'm really busy, or you know, you're, 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 you have your family at home, like you know, my son's running over to me and you know, having me do stuff now. But you can spray it anywhere and not worry about wiping it up because it doesn't leave the residue. And I think that the other important thing that I've learned, which I didn't know, is that the Cloroxes and Lysols and the, and the disinfectants of the world, people are not using them properly. There's multi-step with that process. And usually if you read <clears throat> the disclaimer on the bottoms, you're supposed to leave it on surfaces for over 10 minutes in order for it to do its job and clean it first. And most people are not doing that. They're just <laughs> like, you know, wiping it down and like, okay, I'm done. And that's the great thing about ozone is that you can spray it on something and it's cleaning it and sanitizing it at the same time. So, you know, it's really not only, and I've, and obviously I've been watching, all different news programs to see what you're supposed to be doing and what you're not, because we're all trying to stay safe and you learn what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. And, and most people, at least for me, for years and years and years, were doing the wrong thing and, and walking into a room and smelling, you know, some lavender scent and be like, Oh, it's so clean. Yeah. It's so clean. It's like, no, we have been programmed as a society by companies that paid hundreds of millions of dollars to advertising to tell us that is what clean is. And that is not clean. Those are chemical smells that we are inhaling that are toxic to our bodies and to our, and to our lives. And that's the great thing about ozone is it's not. That's awesome. And you saw the code being posted up there. The O3 clean two is. Oh, there you go. Anne, Anne Marie posted that. Anne Marie. Okay. Thank and you, Jake, Anne Marie. Jake, Jake put it up there even before oh, Anne Marie. Okay. Yeah. Look at my, <laughs> my team. I got to give them props, but. I, I had a, a good question to make sure that we stalled long enough. I figured somebody would put it up there. O three 3 <laughs> clean 2. I'm going online uh, and definitely trying this out. Uh, four kids, family. I've been cleaning things the wrong way with the wrong stuff. That's what I've learned. And I've been paying too much money to do it when you look at the longevity of the product. So thank you so much, Jonathan. I appreciate you coming on. Let's thank do this so again. Great. Thank you. Take care. Bye -bye. There you go, compassionate capitalists helping us all and making money, helping people and having fun. What a great, great product. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. Simply add tap water to a bottle and it lasts three to five years and uh, cleans. Uh, it's a clean cleaner. <laughs> no toxicity at all. All right, let's keep the questions coming. Uh, looking at my team, uh, looking in here, Corey, Samir, let me see here. We'll get down to these questions. You know, <clears throat> Samir, thank you for listening to me. I had a great uh, call with my team to get some more questions up here. And there you are. Uh, many others not there. And so who did you look up to growing? Who did you look up to growing up? Um, well, my mom. Uh, when I was really young, my father then moved to my mom, my uncle Eli, uh, as, as far as, uh, you know, football players, um, I would say that uh, looked up to Dan Fouts, um, Kellen Winslow, all my famous Chargers, John Jefferson, uh, Charlie Joyner. Those are were, those were my sports heroes were all the same. Muhammad Ali, uh, love Muhammad Ali, looked up to him. Um, so, but my, in, in my family were my main mentors uh, growing up. So my dad when I was young, my mom throughout my life still do look up to her, uh, my uncle Eli, uh, great mentors to have and help me guide me to my core principles of gratitude, empathy, accountability, and effective communication. Uh, whoever's left up uh, on my team, please put a question in there. I want to see who's here. So go ahead and put a question in there for me to answer. If you're on my team, a little early morning test to see who's actually listening in uh here thank you my shirt says jake david is on team wade Dwayne wade gave this to me and it's a great running shirt a little bit cool in the morning i like to, to run in the long shirts now that i'm going to spray it with my o3 afterwards uh let's see who coming on thank you 
<laughs> I like this question too, sorry. What did Uncle Eli teach you? He reinforced, he, he planted seeds under to trees that were growing now that I'm 50 some that I used to roll my eyes at Uncle Eli, you know, about, you know, family, discipline, gratitude, forgiveness. Uh, you, you know, one of the greatest lessons is he said, if you're not gonna invest in yourself, what are you gonna invest in? He also told me not to be a victim. You know, I was living in a world of not enough and I was complaining, why me? Why me? Why does everyone else have? And my uncle, I said, don't be a victim. Don't, don't do that, right? Live in a world of your story. Make it your story. Don't be a victim. Nothing's happening to you. Now he did say he's all for you, but I have increased that too. It's through me. I don't live in the world of just for me. I, I live in the world through me for others. Uh, that's awesome. All right. Once again, Andrew, I see you in here. Samir, thank you. Corey, uh, Justin, what's your favorite day of the week today? <laughs> Today's always my favorite day of the week. I'm living in the present and uh, I do things now and I love today. Today is my favorite day of the week and it should be yours. You should love where you are, angle to something better and have faith you'll end up somewhere better than that. And you can do that under the context of today. Live it like there's none other. You're given a bank card at the beginning of the morning and it's full. And you don't know if that bank card is going to have anything on it tomorrow. So use up all of what's on that card that you can. You have an unlimited bank card all day long. Use it up. And uh, you don't know if it's going to be full tomorrow. You don't know what's going to be on there tomorrow. All right. Very good. Um, Team David Meltzer. Good to see you here. Interesting. Uh, who's not here? What is the something that you have recently struggled to forgive yourself with? The need to be resentful, you know, for things like this, right? For, you know, seeing who is engaged in, and just blown smoke up, uh, who's blown smoke, right? So we got Jake and Samir and all you guys, it's making my day. But, you know, I forgive myself for the need to be resentful. Um, and uh, very, very interesting. Straight out street hustles don't work with me, do they? All right, let's see here. How to stop smoking? Well, first of all, I would look genetically at the addiction of nicotine. So for me, extremely hard. Uh, nicotine uh, is the most addictive thing I ever tried. Um, and it's genetic, right? It was handed down from my great grandpa to my grandpa to my dad to me. And so one thing is I want to know the severity of the addiction of the compulsive behavior. And if it's not, it's usually 21 days to create a new neural pathway. If it's handed down from generation to generation to me, which means it may be even through past lives, if you believe in that stuff, then you have to be in it for the long haul. And if you're in it for the long haul, you better start with building habits that uh, are daily for the rest of your life and be patient to know that it may be something that you struggle with your entire life, but it just doesn't take 21 days to create a neural pathway that you have to create systems and processes and support to stop. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was uh, able to do that by lowering the bar. And here I am 15 years later. And never smoked a cigarette in my life, but I chewed tobacco when I was young and I could not quit. So I totally understand. Um, but lower the bar, look at your genetics, your quantum nature of the addiction, the compulsive behavior, whether it be smoking or anything else, and manage your own expectations of how long it's going to take you uh, and how much effort you're going to need and how much discipline. Uh, you know, I have uh, worked with and seen heroin addicts, you know, and they talk about you know, when they're driving, a voice is talking to them in 20 years later, 20 years later, still talking to them. You, you pull off, go buy some, pull off, go buy some. Uh, I'm blessed that's not happening uh, to me right now. Uh, very, very good. Um, here we go. And uh, let's take another question. Shut down or economic fall. What business are recession proof? 
tons of businesses are recession proof. I am more focused in on what capabilities do I have, right? I'm taking an inventory of my skills, my knowledge of the what and the who, and my desire in aligning it, seeing what's supplementary and synergistic to what industries, careers, businesses are doing well right now, what industries, careers, businesses are stable right now, and what industries, careers, and businesses may be doing well in the future. I'm looking at things like the stock market to see which ones fall into which category. I'm also asking for help from experts, 30, 40 year experts that have worked in those industries. Uh, let's have uh, another guest here and uh, looking at the house of leaders. Uh, Brilliant Lou could not have a better name. Brilliance is the expression of genius <laughs> through me. What's going on? What's your hat say there, G uh, Brilliant? My hat says brilliant. Yeah, really. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Thank you. Mine Thank says me. World Series champions. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, give us a little bit of background uh, uh, on the, uh, sorry, on, on the House of Leaders and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, actually, I started House of Leaders five years ago as a, just as a place on Instagram for me to just blog out the leadership my leadership journey because I fall in love with leadership when my first mentor introduced me to it, it changed my life. So first it's just a blog. I just share what's, what are my thoughts, what I'm thinking that day, and then suddenly become big. And a lot of people say they are getting help and they want me to keep going. And then I start growing it. And I, I really want to make house of leaders as a platform for people to be able to co-elevate with each other to be able to support hand in hand with each other and just to make it just to create as many as leaders as i can before i leave the world for good that is my biggest mission well you and i share that mission i'm on a mission to empower over a billion people to be happy and looking for a thousand leaders to empower another thousand leaders to Maybe. empower another thousand people to be happy. That would be over a billion people to be happy. What do you think makes a good leader? How can we empower leaders? What makes a good leader? I think a great leader, a good leader is someone who is able to put themselves first, someone who can um, think before they act. I think, I think it's more to respond over reacting. And someone who is vulnerable, not like exposing everything bad inside of him or her, but simply vulnerable toward, towards other. And like, I think the best quality of leader is someone who can put themselves in other people's shoes before doing something, before making a, making a decision. But well, it, it all comes back to um, the business side. But overall, I think that's the best quality of leader because they can put themselves first and they can feel, um, is, it, is this the good thing to, to do? Because I believe in, as a leader, we have to put the kindness first, for me, for me, at least. Oh, for me as well. Absolutely. You know, kindness over everything for me is you know, being kind to your future self, especially by doing exactly. good deeds. Now, earlier I was talking about, you know, someone asked me how they could quit smoking. And I talked about the conscious, subconscious and unconscious nuance of habits and disciplines and how each section of our mind, our perspective is adjusted, whether what we think, say, do, believe. And even we have a quantum nature, a DNA that determines who we are, obsessions, addictions, all the different characteristics that we have. Uh, we both share one other thing in common as well is the importance of habits. I believe that we are only but a ha a aggregate of the habits that we have. Uh, really? For you, what's your perspective on habits? I think what you say is so true. I gain all, I'm, I'm not going to say successes, but I gain all, I, I accomplish everything I have is because of the habit I built. Because I truly believe that habit Success is a habit. Success, like Jim Rohn said, success is a few good habits repeated every day. So I really, really think one person have to have a great habit before they finally achieve something they really, really want. And what, what are your three top habits that have made you the brilliant Lou that you are? Thank you. Um, my three great habits. I think the first one, what I did, 
I what I always do is that I set my goals. Like you can call it goals, you can call it dream, far away, and then I break it down. People tend to set a goal far, far away, but they forget to break it down into pieces so they can accomplish it. They can do it. They can finish it every single day. Um, that's the first one. The second one is this is so cliche, but this is so true because one should have a courage to to go out, go out of their comfort zone because it's it's kind of easy, but it's not that easy because once you get out of that comfort zone, it's no longer the beautiful place you used to relax and chill. It's a really scary place, and you need to have a really really like. Um, the to do list and the courage to keep moving on, because um, when you go outside your comfort zone, it will bring you growth and actual progress that towards goal. And I think the last one is the mindset. A lot of entrepreneurs or people or person they are trying to achieve something in their journey. Most of them fail because they don't have the right mindset. They have the tools, they have the mentor, they have everything they need. And I think what makes them fail is because they don't have the mindset to go through whatever they are facing right then. Like if you have all the strategic tools, you have all the thing. It still won't bring you the success that you desire if you don't have the right mindset. Afterwards, it's just the networking. Um, expanding your network for your net worth and all those things, but I think that's my top th top three. That's awesome. And uh, lastly, you built quite an audience since 2015. Uh, you have what over 1.3 million followers. And what in building your own personal brand and building your community is some advice that you can give people. I feel it's more important than ever to build your own personal brand and your own personal community. What advice can you give people? Simple. You gotta network. I know a lot of people say use this and use these excuses. I used to use these excuses too. That I'm an introvert. I don't wanna network with people. I wanna try to do this thing alone. Or or I I just wanna be on a backstage. That's not gonna happen when you are an entrepreneur. You have to get yourself out there. And for me now, introverts is just the way of me taking a break. So when I when I need a break, then I'll stay alone. Uh, when I don't need a break, when I have to get on the show on a stage, then I will I will have to be my best, my very best, my best version of myself, and just express myself. So what if you really want to get through this life, whether on social media, on real life, or whatever it is, you gotta network with people because only when you um, network with people. And extend yourself, expose yourself to new people and experiences. You will give yourself more opportunities to accelerate your success. That's only then you will start to have more opportunities. You can gain more knowledge because success is no one man show. I can reach here because I co elevate. I collaborate with a lot of people, amazing people. Like I'm, I I'm co elevating. I'm introducing myself. I am networking with you. Which is this is one of the key to success that everyone have to, has to do. It's That's the cool. fun. Well, you nailed it, brilliant, and I appreciate that. I'm hoping that you can uh, encourage your multiple following to come to my free trainings on Friday. Uh, they're 11 a.m. Pacific time. They can email me, David at dmelzer.com. Or please have everyone join my text community, 949-298-2905. I'd love to share and collaborate with our communities as well. Uh, and, you know, more, moreover, too, you know, the replays are there. If the time difference, you have such a big following internationally. So remember, it's featured on Spotify. It's featured on Entrepreneur. You can get all, we're focused in on transitioning, but we've done building your brand, finding your frequency, ultimate ego, all these different things. So I would greatly appreciate it if you, you'd share that with your community as well. And I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, David. I, I will definitely do that for you. It's amazing. Having Talk you. to you soon. Do this again, Brilliant. Thank you. I, I think will. that's the be best name I've seen all day. The, the Brilliant Lou, and it's early, but uh, awesome. If you are on my team, go back and watch this. Uh, that's all I have to tell you. If you're on my team, it's an early one, but go back and watch this as I finish up with the last question. I think you may be surprised. Uh, 
if you just jumped on and came back at the very end, you may want to watch the middle of this. Uh, we're looking for the real deals. We're looking for people that really are engaged, not creating some sort of uh, street hustle. Here we go. What are you doing to take advantage of opportunities right now? Wow, I'm investing in myself. Uh, I am investing in myself. That's what we're doing. That is what I'm doing. I'm investing in myself, I'm allowing the, the people to fall away or to fire them. Uh, you know, th that's basically what, what I need to do. If uh, they're not aligned, uh, I think uh, if they're not feeding me, uh, if they're feeding me, I'm going to feed them. If they're feeding me, uh, if they're not feeding me, I'm going to let them fall away uh, or fire them. If they start doing things intentionally, uh, you know, in, in bleeding me, then I got to fire them. Uh, but yes, I am looking for people to feed me. I'm investing in myself to empower others, to empower others to be happy, to make a lot of money, help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Uh, so, you know, remember this, everyone. If they feed you, feed it. If they don't feed you, you may want them to fall away. And if they bleed you, fire it from your life. You got that? That That is it. And, uh, you know, the truth vibrates the fastest. If you're on my team, I'd go back and watch this uh, IGTV, as you saw. Thank you, everybody, for the questions. I'm going to go for a great job. Thank you, Dwayne Wade. I am on your team, my man. Thank you for the great running shirt. Remember, everybody, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. We're going to have a great day. Join me Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Transition. Transition personally and professionally, internally, externally. Transition is the training, and it's the number one download. So it's featured on Spotify and Entrepreneur. Check it out. All of my trainings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you tomorrow.